Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Rock and Roll English. Normally I say the episode number but you will hear in a minute I've had some difficulties with that. So I just recorded the intro to this podcast and then it did that thing again where it changes my voice like I have just inhaled a helium balloon. So I talk like that. I still don't know why this happens. It has happened a few times on Rock and Roll English, but I must admit, I actually quite like it. It's quite funny. So instead of deleting it and recording it again, I'm going to let you listen to it. Okay, so here you go. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Rock and Roll English, episode number 338, I think. Like usual, I have had some difficulty counting in recent weeks and the numbers of the episodes seems to have got a little bit mixed up. But who cares about numbers, hey? In fact, for a long time, I didn't even have numbers of episodes. Who cares about numbers, hey? Anyway, in today's episode, we have a very special guest. We have Brie from Into the Story podcast. Now, you know I love stories. And when I found Bree's podcast that was all about stories, I was like, wow, this is amazing. And Bree actually had me on her podcast and I shared a very, very, very intimate and personal story about when my daughter was born because we had some problems and I share that story on Bree's podcast. So go and check out Bree, put into Google, into the story podcast. She has got loads of brilliant podcasts. And if you want, you can also go and find mine. Anyway, in today's episode, we talk about language fails because Brie is Canadian but lives in Spain, in Barcelona. So she has had to learn a new language. And I tell some funny stories, which I don't think I have told before about my time in Italy, especially at the very beginning when I first arrived and I didn't know anything. So here is the podcast. Happy listening. <laughs> So, hello, Brie, and welcome to Rock and Roll English. Hello, Martin. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited to be here. I'm excited about this conversation. And I am extremely excited to have you. As soon as I saw you on Instagram, obviously on Instagram, there are hundreds of thousands of English teachers. But as soon as I saw your profile, it jumped out at me immediately because obviously you have a podcast and... We love podcasts here at Rock and Roll English, and it's all based around true stories, isn't it? That's right. I love a good story. Yes, so do we. So as soon as I saw you, I immediately contacted you. There are often times where I see someone and think, oh, maybe I'll put them on the waiting list. But you, I just thought, I didn't even think about it. I thought I am going to contact her immediately because it just resonated with me immediately. So for anyone that doesn't know you, tell us a bit about you, who you are, what you do, etc. Okay, well, my name is Brie and I am the host of the Into the Story podcast where we help people improve their English, their fluency through true stories. And I'm also the co-founder of an English school here in Barcelona. We are an online school now, and I have a background in psychology. So I'm very interested in the way the brain works and behavior and all of that good stuff. And I also love stories. I, like it sounds maybe kind of silly, but like I really, really enjoy listening to people's stories. I'm someone who, when someone's explaining a story, I'm picturing it. I want to like see exactly what it looked like. And I also use stories in my own life to, um, this can sound strange, but like if something, I'm going through a hard time, I'll mm -hmm. think of myself like, you know, if I'm having a hard time with my family, with my sisters, I have, we're three sisters. So sometimes there's drama. I'll think of myself in like in a romantic comedy. So I see okay. myself inside of like a story and it makes it just feel lighter and more manageable. Um, but yeah, that, that's me. And I'm from Canada. Did I mention that? I'm Canadian. You hadn't mentioned that. I obviously knew that, but you hadn't mentioned that. And obviously that's yes. another big thing. So from Canada, living in Barcelona. That's right. Yeah. I've been here for 13 years now. Right. Okay. So that's mm -hmm. another thing we have in common. Although I don't actually live in Italy anymore in a different country, I still almost feel like I do because my wife is Italian. We speak Italian at home every day. And mm -hmm. I lived in Italy for 12 years. So Okay. So similar. yeah, 
it really becomes part of your like identity becoming yes. being an expat right absolutely so in fact i wanted to ask you how how is that because I, on rock and roll english i mean i've shared hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of stories about my life as an english person living in italy i don't know about you i don't know how was your spanish when you arrived um i could say hola Okay. Is literally like literally what I could say, and I think I was quite ignorant. I was. I don't think I was very ignorant yeah. um, when I was. So after university, I had planned on going back and doing a master's, getting my graduate degree, maybe going and getting a PhD. But then I thought I'm going to go travel. You know, mm. typical North American, going to put on my backpack with my Canada flag on it and go travel <laughs> around Europe. And, and then I thought, I'd like to stay. I'd like to try to stay a year. And I loved Berlin. And then I loved Barcelona. And I was like, well, Barcelona's nice. And, you know, I've always wanted to learn a language. So I'll just move there. And I had no idea what it actually requires to learn another language and how mm. difficult it is to live somewhere when you don't speak the language. You know, like you just go down a level. You can't communicate, mm. you know, I'm sure you had that experience. Oh, what was yeah. your, what was your Italian like I, when you moved? Uh, I, yeah, I only knew how to say ciao. I remember having to ask someone how to say thank you. So I didn't even know grazie. I had to ask someone on like one of the first few days I was there and l yeah. everything you said, I can relate to 100%. Mm -hmm. I remember the only friend I had that had even tried to learn another language he actually spent a year or two in china and got i think to a half decent level i'm not sure in chinese and i remember calling him after i think it was like four days and i said i'm just getting nowhere with the language and i just remember him saying you've only been there four days because <laughs> i think in my i think in my mind i was thinking you know like maximum two weeks and i'll be yeah I'll be, I'll be totally fluid i think many people who have their first language as english like obviously you growing up in canada i think we just have no idea how difficult it is to learn a foreign language and I, yeah i went there as well when i look back now i just think my god I, I was so stupid i thought as well just to learn a language all i needed to do was like translate each word yeah, and that was that it. it that it had the same structure yeah exactly i think i i mean i know that what you're saying is actually quite true that when you're a monolingual when you've only spoken one language mm -hmm. you don't have what we call metalinguistic awareness like mm. you you really just don't even have the concept like that compartment in your brain yeah. doesn't exist of almost like what it's like to communicate in another language and of course, if you grew up with two languages, like our children do, you know, two mm. or even three languages, they have that by five, four or five years old, like yeah, this yeah. awareness of having the other languages. But yeah, I was definitely just a completely ignorant monolingual being like, yeah, I'm going to pay and sign up for a three month intensive course and they will give me the language and that will just be the way it goes. Done. Yeah, <laughs> done. Exactly. Check. Learned Spanish. But no, yeah. here I am. Um. 13 years later, and I do speak, I can say good Spanish now, but there's also Catalan, which is the of course, the yeah. regional language here, which um, is my husband's first language, okay. uh, my, my children as well, they are educated in Catalan, so I understand it. Um, I could probably speak a little bit, but I just, I just don't, but yeah. Right, okay, mm -hmm. yeah, very interesting, yeah, this whole Catalan thing, I've never fully yeah. understood how that works. But, yeah, it's quite um, complex. The, the difference is it's an actual language so mm -hmm. i spent a lot of time in sicily and well I, apparently sicilian is also a language but it's not the official language so in school they still learn italian but yeah. lots of people speak sicilian. sicilian so when i'm with my wife's parents i have to try certainly to understand sicilian yeah and no so it's it's the same here i think it's I, I don't exactly know the difference between, you know, what is something, what makes something a dialect instead of mm. actually a, a different language, but Catalan is in fact a different language. It sounds like Sicilian as well is not a dialect. It is another language. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? And yeah, it's, it's very, it's very different. Yeah. Um, just actually a quick story I wanted to share that popped into my mind about this whole 
the early days and as i said i was having difficulty of like thinking the structure do i just translate the words i remember one of the phrases you learn obviously at the beginning is where are you from mm -hmm. which in italian is di dove sei and then i remember thinking well what's the point in this like d at the beginning so i just thought surely people don't care about that so i started saying to people dove sei which means where are you and i specifically <laughs> remember seeing talking to someone it was like a, a new person and then i just said like where are you and she said i'm here <laughs> and i was like oh so okay so that is important i do need to add that <laughs> that little preposition it does make um it oh does gosh. make a difference Martin, um, i can completely imagine and with you and your the your way of being maybe she thought that you wanted to have like a very deep conversation <laughs> like, <laughs> where are you in your life at the moment where are like, you? Yeah. <laughs> that's really funny and it also shows um that when you learn something like you learned there um in context and it was a real experience for you mm -hmm. <clears throat> you were never going to forget again that that was an important word yeah right because course. you learned that phrase in context and then it became part of your repertoire you're never going to make that mistake again yeah yeah i think that's mm. the same when you obviously i think it happens to lots of people you end up saying something completely stupid yeah. and everyone laughing and then obviously you, you don't make that mistake again but how about you? Do you have any um, yeah, just... language fails that you can yes. share with us? Because obviously we love to hear these in rock language and roll fails. English. Oh my gosh, I have so many language <laughs> fails. Um, but I'll, there's one that comes to mind because it was very early on. And so me and so I when I moved to Barcelona, I was living in a flat uh, with some roommates, some flatmates. Mm -hmm. And uh, one day I went out for dinner with them. It was a going away dinner. And I've actually never really told this story before publicly, but so I sit down and I see a guy come in and immediately attracted to him. Fast forward, this is now my husband. Okay, but I was going to ask, is it your no. husband? Because if your husband listens to this. Scandal. I'm going to tell you a story that no one knows. No. Okay, so it was my husband. And okay. anyways, it was clear that there was, you know, there was chemistry there. Mm -hmm. After the dinner, he asked me to do a language exchange. So a language oh, classic, exchange. Classic. classic. I, I always did that with girls. <laughs> it was that one. was the great thing. I, you know, I spoke English. I had that talent, which yeah. Italian men couldn't offer. Yeah. So it would always be first thing, ask them for a language exchange and yes. then, yeah take the relationship further yeah yeah that you have to use you have to work your strengths yeah of so course. he 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 used that and we went for a language exchange um mm -hmm. i won't go into too many details of that time <laughs> however we went he took me out uh one night we went to this very cool bar in barcelona uh, it's it was called la pipa the pipa club you would go up mm -hmm. into a flat and it was just i just have so many good memories of this time and it was a very cold night and um, we were inside and it was just the warm light and people. And I said to him, um, I'm, I'm, I'm hot, like, estoy... <laughs> like meaning like temperature wise. Yeah. So I said, um, estoy caliente, which means like I'm hot, like <laughs> in a different Like attractive. <laughs> exactly. No, 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 no. Oh. Not even. In it. Yes. Oh, right. Yeah. I think I've got you. Okay. Like you I, got okay. I've, I've got the feeling I want to, you know, yeah. Yeah. Um, and he laughed, <laughs> and he thought, of course. I, I thought <laughs> he, he was, was going like, to say, right, yeah. brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> He's like my, Result. my technique. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but that's a little, a little fail. And then when we were walking down the stairs out of this place, um, he said to me, this is a language fail on his side. He said, um, I was wearing like, um, stockings, like, Okay. uh tights okay because mm -hmm. it's cold out i'm wearing a skirt and tights and he signaled to like so he's below me and i'm walking down the stairs and he kind of signals to my tights and says are <laughs> I don't, maybe this is totally inappropriate no, no, the, the, the more inappropriate <laughs> the better on rocker this is rock and roll lingo this is no is holds barred what, this is not what i was going for martin i wanted to, to be talking about scientific issues and you we'll, we'll, we'll get there that. don't worry and he says to me are your <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing. He says, are your panties warm? <laughs> so are your... pant panties, which is a woman's underwear, the thing she wears underneath. 
he thought that tights were called panties. Right. Okay. Okay. And he said, are your panties warm enough? <laughs> okay. As in like it's cold inside. Wow. <laughs> Are your panties anyway, warm enough? Yeah, and anyways. how did you respond to that? What What did you... I think I laughed nervously. Right. Um, but anyways, we got married and we have two right, kids yeah. now. Well, so it was, things worked out. A very sort of full-on start to the yeah. relationship <laughs> there, wasn't it? About, exactly. Yeah, wowzers. Yeah, um, wowzers. And just like life and culture, what, what things as a Canadian do you, mm -hmm. in your day-to-day -day life... Maybe even now, because there were some things I think I just never got used to whilst I was in Italy or things that took a long time to get used to for yeah. you. I mean, there's so many things, you know, I think that probably maybe maybe um, English culture is even more different than Sicilian culture. But I can say that Catalan culture and Spanish uh, and Canadian culture is very different. One thing that just took a long time to get used to it seems very similar and small um it's just like the concept of how you greet someone oh god yeah. you know like giving <laughs> giving the kisses it, it's not like I, like i'm a hugger i like having contact with people but having to get so close mm. with the kisses to someone that i don't know well just has now i'm used to it but yeah. it, it just took a long time to get used to and, and depending on the age of someone some you know my an older person like my father-in-law he actually kisses my cheek right? right whereas like younger is just like a touch and actually i've had the case with italians where i've they go the they go the opposite way in spain it's like this way not this right way, but italians do the opposite and that's that can be really awkward. embarrassing isn't it where that's you both really like go to the right and then and yeah. then you both go to the left and you just kind of move in yeah. your head left and right uh, uh, uh. yeah and really another thing here that's very funny and just small detail but I don't know. I, I can't, I just can't get it. So when you're crossing someone, so in the mornings I ride my kids to school on the bike and I cross my neighbors. Now, depending on how close. When you say cross, you mean like they're going Sorry. one way, you're going yes. the other way. Yes. Like I right. pass my neighbors, like some, right. maybe the, the man down the street, he is out every single morning tending to his flowers. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now at the beginning of the school year or at the beginning of me riding them to school a few years ago, I didn't know him that well. So I would just say, good morning, buen dia. However, at a certain point in the relationship of how well you know each other, you don't say buen dia. You don't say good morning. Right. You say goodbye. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you just say deo. And I, and right. I just, and, I, and, and you saying deo to them, it implies that you know them. And you're okay. not going to stop for a conversation. You're just going to say bye. Whereas if you said bon dia to them and be like, I don't know you, but I'm just like a human. You're a human. We're here. So I'm going to be a decent human being and say good morning. So I, I don't really know. That's a fail that I have. So all of the neighbors that I pass, I'm like, okay, what do I do? I'm like riding. I'm getting close. I'm like sweating. Like, okay, <laughs> good morning. Uh, they, I don't know. So sometimes I'll just like look straight ahead. You know that thing where you pretend you're I'm yeah, like, pretend course. to like, yeah. sorry, so adjust much easier. my review mirror, look at my kids, make sure they're not like, you know poking each other in the eye or whatever um anyways so yeah that happens so you're expected to do stop and chat so like to actually chat to these people every day well you um it's of course they, they're not expecting if i did stop they would be happy but they know i'm in a hurry but by me saying goodbye it implies like we know each other well enough for me to stop and speak with you but i'm not going to stop and speak with you now right. because I'm in a hurry. And okay. so Got you're you. saying just goodbye, which, right. in, you know, imagine saying this in English, you, you meet, you see someone in the street and you're just like, bye without saying well, anything. It's funny you say that this may have happened. Actually, probably not. I'm not sure. But in Italian, so ciao is hello and goodbye. Ah, so yeah. I have had numerous occasions over the years, certainly low level students that get confused by that. So they walk into the class and they say goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. And you're like, no, no. And no, then no. when they go, they're kind of waving at you, saying hello, hello. <laughs> um, and especially when they do it when they're leaving, you kind of never get a chance to tell them. Well, certainly yeah. if it's not students, if it's just someone you know, because they're leaving, so you're not going to stop them and say, oh, by the way, hello is when you actually like at the beginning of this meeting yeah, let's say mm -hmm. yeah interaction um 
because they're leaving. So it's kind of an error that I think <laughs> I'm not sure when they finally realise because, yeah, I would never correct them because they'd be leaving. And I'd be like, all right, he's yeah, going. So. Right. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So we are going to stop the conversation there and continue the conversation about fails and language learning in the members area tomorrow. If you are thinking of joining, if you would like access to 1000 extra podcasts and the opportunity to build a personal relationship with me because I'm very, very active in the family and with wonderful people from all around the world to practice your English with, then click the link in this podcast episode right now. So thanks a lot for listening, everyone. I will see you very soon. In the meantime, just keep on rocking, baby. Thanks so much for listening to Rock and Roll English. For more great content and to stay up to date, visit rockandrollenglish.com and facebook.com slash rockandrollenglish. We'll catch you next time.